Hey guys, welcome to another video with the Financial Controller. My name is Bill Hanna, and in today's video, we'll cover six frequently asked questions in accounting job interviews for junior accountants. And who are junior accountants? Well, these are accountants uh, with experience between zero and one year. So typically, this is someone who's a recent grad from college with an undergraduate degree in accounting, or maybe if you've done an internship, uh, or maybe have some experience, a few months of experience. So typically the experience level for junior accountant is between zero and one year. Uh, so what we'll do today is we'll go over the six frequently asked questions uh, in these kind of interviews. Uh, we'll go over the best answers for them and the things that I like to hear as a hiring manager that make me immediately realize that this, ca this candidate is the best for the job. So all of this is coming right up. Welcome to another video guys. If you're new to the channel, my name is Bill Hanna and I'm the financial controller. I have over 15 years of experience in the field of finance and I started out my career at PricewaterhouseCoopers and worked my way up after that in private industry to a corporate controller. And my experience allowed me to have seen the hiring table from both sides, both as the job seeker and the hiring manager currently. And so this channel is all about giving you advice and tips uh, to help you in job interviews we also uh, cover a wide variety uh, of financial topics. So if you're in finance or if maybe if you own a business and interested to hear more about financial topics, go ahead and subscribe. All right, let's go over the questions. And the first question goes, when a company is using double entry accounting, what elements of a given ledger must equal? And so to answer this question, there's a couple of definitions here that we gotta go over. Uh, first, uh, double entry accounting. So what we're referring to here by double entry accounting is the use of debits and credits, obviously. So when you enter any journal entry, you have a debit and a credit to the entry. And then the second thing here is mentioned is ledger. So what is a ledger in accounting? Well, ledger is usually a summary of business transactions uh, of certain account that is similar in nature. So you have a ledger for cash, you have a ledger for office supplies, you have a ledger for payroll, uh, and so on and so forth. So the question is, uh, what are the elements uh, of a given ledger that must equal? And obviously the answer is easy, debits and credits. Debits must equal credits, uh, and that will give you a signal that your entries are, uh, are balanced and are, are correct. So uh, debits and credits are the elements that must equal in any given ledger. All right, question number two, and the question goes, how do you minimize the risk of error in your work? And so when the hiring manager is asking this question, there are certain keywords and certain things uh, that I like to hear as a hiring manager personally. And so basically my answer to this is that, uh, first off, I like to create a checklist for all of the work that I'm gonna do. So if I have a task, I'm gonna create a checklist of the things that need to happen for this task to be completed. And so creating a checklist is really important. So usually this is a key word that I like to hear as a hiring manager, uh, the use of checklists. And then the second thing is limiting multitasking. So basically we all in today's world, we like to multitask and do many things at the same time. But what I advise you to do is that if you're beginning your day, make a list of the things that you need to do in that day and then tackle them one by one. Don't try to tackle more than one uh, task at the same time. So limit uh, multitasking. The other thing is automating tasks. So um, to the extent you can possible, you try to automate your work. Uh, an example of that for my own work is when I post a journal entry to the ledger, um, I try to do it via CSV file or Excel file rather than posting manually to the ledger. So when I post manually to the ledger, there is a risk for me to make an error keying in the numbers in the ledger or in the, whatever um, ERP system I'm using, uh, whether it's QuickBooks or NetSuite or whatever the case is. So you can automate the journal entry um, and whatever package you're using for your um, accounting software, you can basically Google how you can automate your journal entries uh, in such uh, ERP. So basically automating tasks as much as possible uh, is key to minimizing risk. The other thing is asking clarifying questions. So basically a good way to hedge against uh, error for, uh, with your work is to make sure that you understand the project to begin with. So asking clarifying questions is really key for you to get the work right. So ask clarifying questions. And then finally, self-review, which is a really key attribute to someone is self-review. This is a key word I like to hear as a hiring manager, is that if you are gonna finish your work and then double check it for errors, basically review your work. So self-review is really important. So to summarize is creating a checklist, uh, limit multitasking, uh, automate tasks, um, ask clarifying questions, 
uh, and self-review. These are the elements that I'd like to hear as an answer to a question on minimizing errors during the work. All right, question number three, and the question goes, how do you differentiate between auditing and accounting? And what the hiring manager is doing here is testing your knowledge or your academic knowledge from school on the difference between the definition of accounting and the definition of auditing. So the answer to that is simple. Um, accounting is the process of recording the business transactions in the form of financial statements. Uh, while auditing is the examination of financial statements to ensure that they fairly represent the financial position of the company. So again, accounting is a process of recording the business transactions in the form of financial statements, while auditing is the examination um, of the financial statements to ensure that they fairly represent um, the position, the financial position of the company. All right, on to question number four in my list, and the question goes, define the three types of financial statements. And this should be easy for you. If you're fresh out of college, you should be able to remember the three types of financial statements and be able to talk about them and define them. So the first one is the balance sheet. Um, and this obviously uh, shows the financial position of the company, the assets and liabilities and the owner's equity. And then the second statement is going to be the income statement, which shows the profit and loss of the company, summarizing all of the sales, uh, all the types of expenses, and then whether the company made a profit or loss. And then the third type of financial statement is going to be the statement of cash flows, which shows the activity cash flowing in and flowing out of the company, uh, mainly in three kinds of activities, uh, operating activities, if you remember the cash flow statement, operating activity is the first type, and then um, uh, investing activity and then financing activity. So these are the three major types of activities that show up in the statement of cash flow. Uh, so the three statements are balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flow. All right, question number five on my list, and the question goes, what is the purpose of a bank reconciliation? And basically the definition of a bank reconciliation is that you're comparing your uh, bank statement balance of cash to your book balance and making sure they're equal and if they're not you then investigate the difference and you book the difference on your books uh, so basically the answer to that is that there's two uh, purposes of a bank reconciliation one it's an internal control to cash fraud so basically when you uh, reconcile the bank you want to have the person who reconciles the bank to be a different person from the person who entered the transaction so that if somebody commits fraud then the other person would catch it so it's a form of internal control and then the uh, second purpose of it is uh, for completeness of transaction. So basically, uh, when you reconcile the bank, you're then catching any activity that were recorded on the bank side and not recorded on the book side. So that ensures you have a complete set of activities uh, in your financial statements. So uh, again, the two, the two purposes of the bank reconciliation is internal control to cash fraud. And then secondly is uh, to ensure completeness of the transactions on the books and records. All right, question number six on my list or the final question today. Can you explain the basic accounting equation? And we all remember this from school, the basic accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. But how do you explain it to someone? How do you put it into words? How do you explain what that means? The easiest way to do that is to say assets, which is what you own, equals what you owe. So assets is what you own in the company equals what you owe. What you owe is liabilities and owner's equity. So liabilities is what you owe, or the obligations you owe to third parties, while owner's equity is what you owe to the owners of the company. So the basic idea here is that what you own uh, is the assets equals what you owe, which is liabilities plus owner's equity. What you owe to uh, third parties is liabilities and owner's equity is what you owe uh, to the owners of the company. And that's the answer to question number six, which is, can you explain the basic accounting equation? All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it and you learned something from it, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video.